Hi guys, Squishy Bee here. Today is July 26, 2022. Welcome to this week's Bible reading. Today we're going to be doing Matthew chapter 22. Uh, so let's just start with a quick prayer first. Father in heaven, thank you so much for bringing us together to do this Bible reading. I pray that you please bless your word and bless those that are listening. And uh, give us wisdom for what it is that we're reading today and help us to just block out anything that might be a distraction and just focus on your word. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, verse 1. And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is likened to a certain king which made a marriage for his son and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding. And they would not come. Again he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come into the marriage. But they made light of it, and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the remnant took his servants, and entreated them spitefully, and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth. And he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. Then saith he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he saith unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither, not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen." Then went the Pharisees, and took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk. And they sent out unto him their disciples with the Herodians, saying, Master, we know that thou art true, and teachest the way of God in truth. Neither carest thou for any man, for thou regardest not the person of men. Tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar, or not? But Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? Shew me the tribute money. And they brought him, uh, brought unto him a penny. And he saith unto them, Whose is this image and superscription? They say unto him, Caesar's. Then saith he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. When they had heard these words, they marveled and left him and went their way. The same day came to him the Sadducees, which say that there is no resurrection, and asked him, saying, Master, Moses said, If a man die, having no children, his brother shall marry his wife, and raise up seed unto his brother. Now there were with us seven brethren, and the first, when he had married a wife, deceased, and having no issue, left his wife unto his brother. Likewise the second also, and the third unto the seventh. And last of all, the woman died also. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be of the seven? For they all had her. Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. For in the resurrection they neither marry, nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. But as touching the resurrection of the dead, have ye not read that which was spoken unto you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And when the multitude heard this, they were astonished at his doctrine. But when, Fer when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him, and saying, Master, which is, great, which is the great commandment of, in the law? Jesus said unto him, 
Thou shalt love thy Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, saying, What think ye of Christ? Whose son is he? They say unto him, The son of David. He saith unto them, How then doth David in spirit call him Lord, saying, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, till I make thine enemies thy footstool. If David then called him Lord, how is he his son? And no man was able to answer him a word, neither durst any man from that day forth ask him any more questions. And that's it, guys. That is chapter 22. That was a short one, it seems. Um, so, first let me just give you the verse of the week, which I picked uh, verse 14, which says, For many are called, but few are chosen. So this kind of goes along, and if you look at the context of uh, where it was, where this falls, it's with the parable, because this is still in red here. This is of uh, the period where Jesus was speaking in this chapter. Uh, he he was talking about this wedding situation, okay? And so this is a common thing when he was dealing with the Pharisees, and this wedding really kind of sums it all up, I think, uh, where the the wedding that he's talking about is the wedding supper of the Lamb that we all go to as like a celebration in heaven. And, you know, he's talking about how he first went to the Jews, which he always did, and it was, so nobody, it, none of the Jews can say that he wasn't fair. He always went to them first and gave them an opportunity. And this really kind of happened even with the Old Testament prophets, you know. Um, a lot of the times they wouldn't listen to them either and killed them, right? So um, they they went to them first, and they, they turned them down. They weren't interested, just like they said that they the people didn't want to come to this wedding in this parable. And uh, so then he goes to everybody else, and that's basically how, after he was done dealing with the Jews, and he's like, I'll come back to you guys later during the Great Tribulation. And then he goes to the Gentiles and, you know, everybody else and invites all of us. And some people will accept this wedding invitation uh, to salvation. Basically, it's talking about salvation through belief on Jesus. Um, some won't, but a lot of them did. As you can see, that the the whole thing was filled. All a lot of people when he went and just invited everybody else, they're like, "Yeah, I want to come to a wedding. <laughs> yeah, I'll accept your free gift." And that's that's what it is. It's a free gift. Um, and then there is this this strange guy that shows up without. Uh, the wedding garment. So the wedding garment, I don't want to get too much into t teaching here because uh, I'm not supposed to be doing that, but just as a chatting between, you know, siblings in Christ, does anyone really know what they are talking about with that? I think that when you're saved, you're given this garment because it, it's always the white garment, which is like taking... It's like you're being cleansed when you're uh, forgiven of your sins and you're given this whole new, you become a new creature and you're given this new outfit, right? Which is this white robe. And so if you try to sneak into heaven other ways, like trying to work your way to heaven, trying to say the, the newest thing, that they're doing and they're going to try to push, I think, during the Great Tribulation is this one world religion where anyone can go to heaven. It doesn't matter who you worship or um, it's all the same thing, right? Uh, well, obviously that's not true. Jesus says that he is the only way to heaven. And 
So there, that, that could be an example of, of people that are trying to get to heaven through all these other uh, false religions. Uh, and, um, and obviously they're sent to this outer darkness. Now what is this outer darkness? Anytime God is talking about this gnashing of teeth and outer darkness, it's referring to hell. And uh, th we see that frequently um, brought up. And uh, because hell is made up of this, when they, it talks about a, a fire that never goes out. And, but it's a, it's a weird kind of fire that doesn't give light. Um, it burns super hot, but it's very, it's dark. So not only are people, when they go into this lake of fire, that they are, you know, remember this is later. This is not the current hell where people, uh, uh, you don't want to know what goes on there. I think there's like different levels of hell where it depends on what you did here, um, you know, as to what is done to you during that period of time before the lake of fire. Remember, I was saying that hell right now is like jail and then you go to your you know, the hearing, the actual um, thing in court where you are given a sentence, permanent sentence, and then you're sent to, like, hardcore prison, right? And uh, that hardcore prison is the lake of fire. And that, even though you picture fire, would be it would be lit up, right? You'd be able to, like, talk to other people that are floating in the lava, right? Uh, but no, it's this strange, dark type of um, flame that just doesn't ever go out. And um, so when he talks about this uh, outer darkness and a gnashing of teeth, gnashing of teeth is like you're in so much pain. It's, it sounds graphic, but you're in so much pain from burning that um, all you can do is just, you know, grit your teeth. What are you going to do? They're not going to be talking to people next to you. <laughs> Um, so anyway, uh, that is what he's referring to there. So I think that this, and obviously this guy is kicked out. He's not able to stay at the wedding, but, um, there will be a lot of people. I think they're going to try that. You can see that now people talking about all these different ways, all these things lead to heaven. No, not really. Uh, so, uh, but so when it talks about, for many are called, but few are chosen. That gets into uh, kind of this predest predestination uh, um, where God knows in advance who is actually going to accept that call. Uh, if we look at similar verses, remember I said if you go to this site, um, this King James Bible online, and you click similar verses, it brings up all these different verses that are like that. And it, it's this is brought up quite a bit. Like, for example, Matthew 20, 16 says, So the last shall be first, and the first last, for many be called, but few chosen. Um, it, it talks about um, quite a bit where uh, people are, you know, it, it, it kind of goes along with the whole thing where, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Uh, it you could probably see this now, that you're kind of a small group if you're a Christian right now. That a lot of people, and it's getting less and less, that... Um, we're kind of the minority right now because uh, there are so many things that Satan is using this multi-faceted plan to try to keep people from getting saved. And it's unfortunately working with most people. And I can say that most people um, because very few are able to get around all of that um, this blindness, that Satan blinds people so that they don't get saved. It's like a spiritual spell that's put over people so that they don't actually see what's actually going on. 
and uh, that get that gets removed when you get saved. You can actually see. Then once you get saved, you notice all this stuff that, that's going on. Hey, I see what you're doing there. <laughs> you know, like you notice all these things, and you start watching stuff on TV and everything, and you're like, look at this. The, what is this? Why Why are people actually watching this? Oh, wait a minute. I actually used to watch that. Why did I used to watch that? You know, it's like the, you, you'd start to question everything that you ever did. Like, what was I thinking? You know, because it's because you were blinded, just like all these other people. So um, it's just that once you're, you're given this a blessing of being able to have the gift of sight and be able to see because when you hear them talking about um i was blind but now i see it's not it's not just about actual vision problems a person I, even though there were examples of jesus healing people so that that were blind and then they could see but you actually there is a spiritual reference there it's a, a like a parallel where um you're blinded spiritually and then all of a sudden you can see and you you see everything differently once you get saved. You start to notice all of the trickery that's about, right? So, um, anyway, I think that, um, you know, the, there's, when it talks about the few that are chosen, it, there is something where the Bible does talk about God knowing in advance uh, who it is that's going to be who's going to accept that call. God draws in people. I think that he knows because he, he knows the future and he knows who's going to uh, accept the gift of salvation and who isn't. So I kind of think that's what he's talking about there. But what do you think of that? I thought that would be a, a good reference. And when, you know, this whole situation with the, the Jews is just so sad to me to see how they, uh, you know, they were given so many chances and God loves these people so much that they were the apple of his eye. These people mean so much to him and he tries everything and they're just so stubborn and they won't listen. And it makes me think of, um, if you've ever read uh, Matthew twenty three thirty seven, that says, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them, which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. So it just puts this picture of how God is just, you know, gathering people and like putting them under and protecting them under um the the wing of the chicken and they're trying so hard to protect them but they just keep running out you know and and getting into trouble and they just wouldn't he could not get them to stay and i think it's a really good picture of what's going on and you know it seems not really just the jews because people even um of the gentiles you know you know that god is trying so hard to get all of us to be saved and you, if you look back, you can see all of the times in your life that God um, tried all these different things by putting this in your path and this in your path, people in your path, uh, various situations where um, your conscience, which is really the Holy Spirit trying to, to tell you, you, go this way, not that way, do this, don't do that. And sometimes we just ignore it. And sometimes we ignore it over and over again until we we sear our conscience, which is a very bad situation to get in. And the Bible talks about that, too. And I think that there's a lot of people that end up doing that. And that's why it's so hard to get through to some people um, today that you might be trying to witness to maybe a loved one, maybe somebody that you really want to get saved. And you know what's coming if they get left behind. And... Uh, just nothing that you say seems to get through. Uh, sometimes it, it could be that they've already seared their conscience. And there there is a point sometimes when God is like, uh, hey, I've tried. And if you aren't, you know, if you want to be a believe in the lie, then go ahead and believe in the lie. And during the tribulation, that is a point where God gives them over to a reprobate mind and um, 
and they end up believing the lie of the Antichrist and are damned. The Bible uh, warns us of that situation. So that's another reason why it's so important to get people saved now because until the rapture and the beginning of the Great Tribulation, you may still be able to get through to people, even though it seems really hopeless sometimes. Um, I've seen people completely do a 180 uh, because it may not be something that you say right that moment, but something that you, if you're saying bits and pieces of things, and then God sends other people, maybe strangers, and they say certain things, or they catch, he, God is putting different things in their YouTube feed or Facebook or wherever they happen to be hanging out. Something one day might be that final straw for them that, that clicks and they get, and they believe. And once that happens, then it just kind of falls into place. And sometimes people are just, um, they may even believe, but it might be just taking them a little bit of time to grow and they get stuck as a baby Christian. So sometimes it's hard to tell, I think, if somebody is really saved or not. Only God knows. And uh, so you just have to keep praying for them, keep being kind and patient with them and loving, and don't give up. Um, but don't blame yourself either. Don't get down on yourself that you you didn't get that person saved. It you know that you must it must have been something you did because sometimes it's nothing to do with you. Sometimes um, it's you know it's just out of our control. So you just have to do your best and move on. Sometimes you may not get someone that you really really care about saved. But God has some other complete stranger waiting for you to get to them that will get saved. Very similar to this situation where uh, he was, it, you know, because God was thinking of the, the Jews as his children. That was his people, right? And they wouldn't listen. So then he went out to complete strangers, other people outside of the family, right? Um, and they listened. And kind of that's like what's going on now. As you can see, if you if you pay attention at all to um, what's going on in the Christian persecution for my prayer videos that I do, you can see where people that are in these far corners of the world that they aren't always, you know, getting exposed to Christianity or maybe never, and they're just, they're only exposed to the religion of their area which a lot of times is, you know, the, the Muslim religion or Hindu religion, um, Buddhism, things like that. And when, so when they do hear the gospel, there's don't forget that some of those people are some of those few that are chosen, right? And um, it, it doesn't mean it's just all people that are in your area. A lot of times these people, they hear this and they, they immediately are... Um, just drawn to it and they can't learn enough they just can't wait to hear more about Jesus and those people will get saved and whereas other people that have the ability to hear the Bible anytime they want you know they've got Christians in their family trying to tell them they've got they can read the Bible without being persecuted arrested or killed for it which a lot of these places they are um, and they just, they take it for granted. And they don't read the Bible and they don't listen to people that love them and care about them and want to share these things with them. Uh, and those people are, unfortunately, some of them are going to be just like the the Jews that are, were invited to this wedding and um, and turn it down for all their things. Like they described that they, you know, the one to his farm, another to his merchandise. Well, maybe today it's, um, this person was like, blew it off to watch Netflix. This person blew it off to play PS5, right? So, uh, you just insert the time frame to the situation. Still, nothing is new under the sun. People have been acting this way all along from day one. So, and nothing ever seems to change. People are people. It just, maybe the different types of um, technologies and things like that change over time, but people's nature is the same. So, anyway, um, I also just wanted to, to point out something. Maybe this is something not all that significant to people, but 
I don't know if anyone just caught that, the fact that um, the, uh, the Sadducees and the Pharisees, they're kind of different from each other, if you notice that. Um, the Sadducees, they, uh, they don't believe that, you, um, that there is uh, a resurrection after death. And so uh, that is a whole different thing that, you know, when they were, um, when Jesus was there, you know, that was a whole other thing. Like, they're like, what? You're going to say that you're going to come back from the dead? There is no come back from the dead. So uh, you can see when you, when you read the gospel at the end of, uh, let's look that up real quick together. Uh, First Corinthians... 15, 1 through 4, but actually, um, it's after, oh, normally people see the um, 1 through 4 for the gospel, but if you look at the part that comes, um, well, actually it isn't in the 4, I'm sorry, uh, where it talks about, uh, last, um, let's see, uh, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Um, he's also talking about uh, the resurrection in here. Because people uh, believe that back then, and still now, the, the people in that um, Jewish religion, a lot of them don't believe that uh, there is life after death said some of them for some reason they were they didn't believe in this resurrection so what is the point is basically what he's saying there i mean what is the point um in believing if you don't believe that there is life after death there is really no point i mean this life is fleeting and very short so it just seems like uh that was an interesting thing. I it, Back in here, when you go a little bit past it, talks about, but if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ not be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Right? So this, this if you look a little bit past the, the gospel of 1 through 4, um, and go a little bit further down, it, it talks about, that a bit and uh, it, it's an interesting thing because then he had to kind of deal with that aspect of their strange belief system uh, because you know people d just thought that must be nuts this guy's actually saying that um, he's going to be coming back from the dead because a lot of people would believe in uh life after death. There's a lot of people that believe in that. They just don't believe that in Jesus or that Jesus is the way to get to life after death. But then these people, they didn't believe that there was even a life after death at all. So, I don't know, I just thought that was kind of interesting that uh, at the end that those two groups were kind of uh, snubbing each other, I guess you could say, the Pharisees and the Pharisees. Do you notice they were kind of like um, uh well, they they kind of noticed that the that they had um, that he had kind of shushed the Sadducees with the stuff that he was saying, and so they came up with another way. They're always kind of trying to trick him somehow, which uh, you know, it, <laughs> really very smart. I'm going to trick God. So anyway, he always seemed to come up with a way to answer them that. Gave me left them speechless in the end. Um, so, and if you notice at the end, it was like, and, and no man uh, from that day forth asked him any more questions. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, I hope that this has been a blessing. I know this was a short uh, um, chapter, but there was a really good section in there talking about this wedding that I think was probably one of the most important things in this entire, the book of Matthew, I think that um, it's really important when people are trying to picture, uh, you know, how it is that uh, that we we get saved and the comparison between, the argument between 
working your way to heaven and accepting uh, the gift of Jesus and um, getting immediately made new with that white robe and uh, that that's the only way into heaven and notice how it you know talks about that he invited people uh, bad or good so it's important that people remember that that it doesn't matter whether you are someone who has done good things your whole life or whether you're um, some homeless man on the street that's was doing drugs for the last 10 years and is sitting there in tattered clothing in a little tent on Skid Row. And uh, this is kind of similar where someone that is uh, just a random Christian just takes the time to go down there. And that one day that they were witnessing to the homeless people on that street, they just happened to hit this one guy the right time where his heart was open and he believed and accepted Jesus as his Savior. And that man goes from a life of of this horrible cycle of addiction, uh, you know, and self-hatred. And, you know, a lot of these people are self-medicating and stuff and have all kinds of um, psychological problems and stuff. And they are trying to deal with it themselves because we have no... Um, you know, system set up for mental health in this country at all. But that's another whole topic. But anyway, this guy gets saved and immediately goes from this um, this homeless tent to having a place at that wedding supper in this beautiful white clean robe. And uh, so it doesn't really matter where your background is or... Whether, you know, he could do that and the very next day, boom, we're raptured. And he hasn't had very much time to go out and witness to other people, but he still is at that wedding. So it's, you know, that's just kind of like a an example of people that they went out and just invited everybody off of the street to this wedding. And... uh some of those people are going to come and they they will have very little time to go out and earn rewards, but they still made it into heaven. And so um, that that's just something to keep in mind for people that have it in their mindset or people that try to convince you that now oh, you should have been doing this your whole life and uh, working your way, you know, to heaven. Only good people um, go to heaven. Well, no, it's Jesus that that did all of that work for you. Once you get saved, you kind of want to go out and do good things because that is the work of the Holy Spirit. It makes you want to go and do good things. And if you have time to do that after you get saved, then that's great. Not everybody's going to have that opportunity. So uh, it's important that we we get people, get out there and invite everybody. Get out there and start inviting people to that wedding because... You're going to appreciate it when you get there and you see them sitting at that table and you're like, Oh, I remember you. I just, I would forgotten all about that guy. I talked to him like quite some time back and um, didn't even realize that I had had that kind of effect on him with what I had said. And it may just be a very small thing that you did or even that they, you left a track around. They found that track and it on just the right day when they, they were open to hearing what was in it. So you may not have ever even spoken to the person. But someone is at that wedding because of some note you left sitting around or tracked or something. Uh, so it's not always just conversations that you have. Um, that can have an impact. Just leaving around a track and what have you. So just keep that in mind. So anyway, uh, I will let you go because I know I'm, I'm just blabbing on and on here. But uh, I I will uh, be back again with another video very soon. I'm going to be working on it uh, over the next uh, couple of days because my husband has a Thursday and Friday now. So uh, I'm going to try to get as much done 
before that as I can. And then on the weekends now, I'm here where I wasn't be able, I wasn't in the past because of his schedule. But now over the weekends, I can work on videos. So I really like to get to some news videos too, as there's so much stuff going on, man. Uh, so hopefully I'll be back with some of that. All right, guys, I hope you're all doing well. Until next time, I love you, God bless you, and I'll be seeing you. Bye-bye.